Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andre, I'm a black nerd. E3, that's been going on for the past few days. Ah, rest, relaxation. <laughs> but a lot of you have been asking me to talk about this fish. Finding Dory is a new movie from Disney and Pixar, but it came out during the week of E3, so because I was wrapped up in the E3-ness, I didn't get a chance to really talk about it. A lot of you have been asking me what I thought about the movie, although it seems like a lot of you went and saw it anyway, because that movie made a bunch of money. I'm gonna give you the good, I'm gonna give you the bad, I'm gonna give you the nerdy. Actually, this time, I'm gonna give you the bad, I'm gonna give you the good, then I'm gonna give you the nerdy. Yeah, I'm gonna bring up the bad stuff first about Dory. Well, not bad, just stuff you need to know. Uh, Finding Dory is a sequel in its purest form of sequelness. It's a movie that's completely unnecessary. Necessary. It's a movie that follows similar beats to the first movie. We have another fish that's missing, has to get back home to their family, except this time it's Dory instead of Nemo. You have characters that pop up in this movie that are solely there because they were in the first movie, and you have to show them again to go, hey, remember that character from the first movie? They're there still. And it does that thing with sequels where sequels always feel like they have to raise the stakes of the original film, but sometimes it gets to the point where you even go, even in your fantasy world that you've created, I can't believe that that happened. That's a little bit too much for me to, to comprehend, even in your world of talking fish. It gets a little crazy. Some of it's really good, but still crazy. But what makes this a good movie is that even though it's a sequel, they still do a good job with it. The animation is still absolutely beautiful. This one looks amazing. The ocean is back, it's beautiful. The new locations they bring in this movie, absolutely gorgeous. There's some great jokes in this movie. I really like a lot of the humor in this movie and the cast just does a great job. Ellen DeGeneres is just so good as Dory. And what's interesting about Finding Dory over Finding Nemo is, in Finding Nemo, Dory's whole short-term memory loss was totally play for laughs. It was totally a joke type of thing. But in this movie, you get a little bit of that as humor, but you also get a lot of heart and kind of dramatic elements of her short-term memory loss. I don't think this is too much of a spoiler because I believe they show part of this in a trailer or you probably have heard of it by now. But you get to see Dory at a young age with her parents, the parents that she's trying to find in this movie. And you see that her short-term memory loss is actually a concern for her parents. They're worried about her well-being, her safety. They're worried that she's gonna be in danger. They have to always keep watch with her. You also have to realize that this is a problem for her, that she has to deal with her entire life. And anybody that cares for her is gonna have to deal with this as well. You can almost kind of compare it to real world when people have certain kinds of disabilities or conditions that they can't function completely 100% by themselves and someone else has to help them to go through life. And them having to deal with it themselves as well as other people around them having to deal with them because they care about that person. You see that in Finding Dory with this fish. I think this was a nice element to add some more depth to Dory because if they didn't do that, I think that it would have been like Mater in Cars 2. They gave her some background, some story, so that when you see that she's trying to go and find her parents, you actually feel some emotion for it, and that's great. Also, the new characters they put in this movie are absolutely funny. I loved the uh, shark and the whale, uh, Destiny and Bailey, because they remind me of that couple, like, you know yeah, you have friends, and you've just known them for so long that the filter has completely gone? You'll talk about them while they're right there in front of you, which happens in this movie. <laughs> Destiny is talking about Bailey, and Bailey's just like, I can hear you talking about me, Destiny. I'm right here. I know you're talking about me. But then like seconds later, they're friends again. Like they just, it's just not a thing that they dwell on. It's just they talk crap about each other, but at the same time, they're also there for each other and they're best friends. When they pull out those irks, you tell them, hey, you irking me right now, but we still cool. And Ty Burrell, man, that's just a, he is just a funny dude. Ty Burrell is hilarious. He voices Bailey, and I just like that dude. He's great in Modern Family. He's great in this. Disney must like him because they're putting him in everything. Him and Idris Elba. Idris Elba is the voice of a seal in this movie. I'm just like, man, Idris Elba, Disney got you, boy. They gave you that money. You're like, I want to do more than just this Thor movie. They're like, we got you covered, Idris. Don't leave us. <laughs> Don't go be Bond and leave us. Idris was probably calling Warner Brothers being like, hey, you've, you got that Green Lantern yet? Anybody that's that Green Lantern? I'm just saying, I don't think I'm in this Thor thing for very long. If you want to call me up and give me Green Lantern, and they're like, get off that phone, Idris, you with Disney. <laughs> Call Tyrese. And I loved Hank, voiced by Ed O'Neill. He's this octopus that Dory meets, and he's really cool. His animation is absolutely marvelous because he has a mouth. I think you see a couple of scenes in the movie that he does have a mouth, but a lot of times the way that he is positioned in the movie, you don't see his mouth. So most of his expressions are coming from his eyes and his tentacles, and they just do an amazing job of the animation with that. I read somewhere that they literally took years to just perfect the animation of Hank, and it shows. The way that he moves his tentacles, the way that his eyes are very expressive, the way that he can camouflage at certain points in the movie, it's absolutely wonderful. One of the best animated characters that Pixar has made. Good job with Hank. And even the parts where I'm like, that's a little outlandish, I still enjoy it. There's a scene that happens in the third act 
that just, it makes no sense by any standard of the imagination. I don't care if you got talking fish, talking octopus, talking seals. There's a part in this movie where I go, no, that's not even possible in this universe. But gosh darn it if it ain't funny. <laughs> it's just a fun adventure. This one is not as sad times as Finding Nemo. Like Finding Nemo, if you really look at it, it's a pretty sad movie. <laughs> this one is played more as a comedy with some dramatic elements. Most of the drama you're gonna get, or most of the sadness you'll get from this movie, is probably gonna be from when you see the parts of Dory when she's younger, dealing with her short-term memory loss with her parents, and her feelings of not being able to find her parents, or even not even remembering who her parents are, and trying to struggle with remembering where she needs to go, with her short-term memory loss. I think the best way to describe this movie is it's like a kid's movie version of Memento. <laughs> or, or what's that TV show on NBC, Blind Spot? This is like Dory, uh, fish blind spot, blind fish. Or Dory, where's my car? It's a fun, like, figuring out the clues, trying to backtrack and remember things to get back to your family. And it's an interesting movie. Enough of the nerdy. Definitely stay to the end. There's after credit scenes in this. They get Marvel on us. And I won't spoil it, but there is a celebrity voice in this. And the joke around the celebrity voice is very, very funny. I thought it was very innovative, very creative way of putting this celebrity voice in there. It's a Pixar sequel. It's not on the lines of like the Toy Story sequels, but it's not like Cars 2. Like this is still an enjoyable movie. There are Pixar movies I definitely like more than this movie, but there are also Pixar movies that I don't like as much as this movie. You will enjoy yourself if you go see it in the theater. You won't be bored by it. This will not be the type of movie that you put on just to keep your kids quiet. Adults will appreciate this movie too. There's even a couple of jokes just for you. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, please subscribe. I make new nerdy videos all week, every week. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Addy 5000. Chain chomp yomp.